and welcome to another video by Jim the Car Guy. Today we have a uh, job that should be fairly easy, but you gotta. Oh, start over. We have here is a 2000. Start this one already. Start over. Hi, and welcome to another video by Jim the Car Guy. Today we have a 2010, it's a Kia Rondo, and we're going to be changing the rear brakes first, and then we're going to go up and do the front brakes. So, um, Hi, and welcome to another video by Jim the Car Guy. Today we have a 2010, it's a Kia Rondo, and we're going to be changing brakes all the way around. We're going to do the back brakes first because that's the one that most people have problems with because of a bolt that's actually hidden behind a, uh, a, a strut arm. So we need to remove that arm out of the way so we can gain access to the 14 millimeter bolt which is behind it that holds the mounting bracket onto the vehicle. So I'll bring you in there. I'm going to show you where it is, what kind of tools we're going to need, and then we're going to get this job done. So uh, come on over and uh, let's get started. Okay, as you know, this is the, uh, the rotor here. We're going to need to take this rotor off of the car. So what we're going to do first is we're going to come in here and we're going to knock out these screws right here. Sometimes they can be extremely tight. I'm going to show you a trick that I use to get them out very easily without any kind of complications. We are going to take off this, uh, this portion here of the caliper. We're going to take out that 14 millimeter there and this 14 millimeter here. But before we do that, we're going to push that piston back into the bore as far as it can go because we want to check to make sure that this slide pin and this slide pin are working properly. That could be a little bit stiff, but uh, we want to make sure that they're not frozen. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to come up underneath here and we're going to take out that 14, um, I think it's a 14 millimeter bolt there. And then we need to come up underneath here. And as you can see, or maybe you can't see, uh, this is where the other 14 millimeter bolt is right up inside there. So we're going to need to take out this bolt here. I think that's either 18 or 19 millimeter. We're going to unscrew that nut right there and we're going to pull this strut rod here out of the way. Now before we take this totally out we're going to unscrew it three quarters of the way off and then we're going to tap it in the back to make sure that that bolt comes through. And we are also, when we're doing that, we're actually going to hold that bolt right there. I think that's 17 millimeter back there to keep it from rotating. So, uh, all right, uh, let me show you the tools you're going to need, and then we're going to get started. All right, obviously we're going to need some light so we can see what's going on. You know my favorite light is this OTC Spectrum light. They work beautifully. Uh, we're going to need an assortment of screwdrivers, a pry bar, some uh, rust buster or any kind, of, any kind of chemical to loosen up rust, a hammer, a set of uh, metric sockets, a short extension, and even a shorter extension, a, uh, what was it for, three, three, oh, okay, this one here we're not going to need, that was for the other side because I needed to remove the slide pin and it was frozen, uh, a centering bar to actually put the unit back together, a driver like this just in case you cannot get the screws out of the rotor, a very long ratchet, the longer the handle, the better, a 17 millimeter wrench, some kind of a file or sandpaper to clean up any kind of rust, a driver such as this to loosen up those Phillips head screws we talked about, and a pry bar like that to push that piston back in. And of course on this one we are going to use an air gun, we are going to use some synthetic brake grease, some never seize, and some, uh, some brake cleaner. So uh, alright let's get set up and uh, let's get started. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our pry bar and we're going to come in the back right over here, right through this little portion right here, and we're going to push this, this piston is going to be pushed back into the bore, the caliper is going to come this direction, and that brake pad is going to stay right there. And that's pushed in about as far as it's going to go. Now the reason we're going to check these slide pins here is to make sure that these slide back and forth and they're not frozen. But I can tell you already they are clear. They are a little stiff, but they do slide back and forth pretty freely. We are going to clean these up and we're going to uh, lubricate them until it will slide easier. But you can see it does slide. A little tight, but it does slide. 
Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take out that 14 millimeter bolt there and there. And hold that thought. I tell you this all the time, just uh, be careful with these bolts, you don't want to lose them. We're going to put these off to the side. And we're just going to take our caliper and we're just going to relocate it out of the way right now. But you can see the piston is pushed back into the bore as far as it'll go. We're just going to put this off to the side just like that. And these are the slide pins. These are actually a little stiff, but they do slide. All right, next thing we're going to do now is we're going to take off that bolt right there. So uh, let's grab our, our impact. Take off that bolt right there. And then we're going to hold the back with that wrench just to keep her from spinning. All right. Now, remember I told you before, if that bolt is frozen inside here or it doesn't move freely, do not take a hammer and bang on here because you're going to damage the threads. Take the nut, screw the nut back onto it just like this. You take your socket, put your socket over the bolt like that, and you hit it. I'm going to trade spots here. Alright, one thing you do not want to do is damage those threads. If you damage the threads, you won't be putting this bolt back in there. You'll be making a trip to the, uh, to the dealer to get it moving. All right. Then now after we have it moving, we just put a little drift on here like this, a metal drift. Tap it. Make sure when your bolt comes out, you don't lose this washer here because that needs to be on there. All right, now we'll take our, our punch out like this. And now that moves fairly easy. It's not really that tight. You get in here with a screwdriver like this and just pry it. And you see how it moves? It'll pop up just like that. And now you have access to both this bolt here and that bolt underneath there. And that is where the other bolt is located right in there. And now we'll take out that bolt right there. And we're going to take out the other 14 millimeter up on top. And we're going to take that mounting bracket off. Now to get these bolts out in the back here, you may need a short extension such as this. Or you could even use a deep socket if you wanted to. And now we're going to take out the, uh, the bolts. We're just going to loosen them for now. We're not going to take it out yet. You want to loosen both bolts before you take one of them out. Again, don't lose the bolts or wash it. off to the side for now but we'll come back to that 
the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take out these bolts right here. Sometimes they can be pretty tight, but what you do is you get on here with a metal drift like this. So if you have, if you don't have the, uh, metal, the steel, you can use brass as well. We put this on here like this and we strike it fairly firmly to try to break any rust or, or uh, Loctite or anything like that on there. Now when you put this on, you're not going in perfectly straight because you don't want to damage the threads, the, uh, the Phillips head. So you're going to have a slight angle. This is exaggerated, obviously, but it's going to be a very slight angle just like that so we can break it loose. So right, let's do that. Okay. And when you hit them like that, usually it breaks any kind of rust loose that are holding those in there. I hear this all the time from subscribers that ask me, do you need to use these over again? If you can get them out and put them back in, definitely put them back in. If you have to strip this out here and you can't reuse it because you needed to drill it out, then obviously you don't have to worry about it. You just have to make sure that that piece is flush and it's not going to interfere with the rotor. Now, if that didn't work, they sell something like this. It's a driver. You could put it on here like this. It's an impact driver. You put it on and you rotate it like this and you bang the back of it. And when you hit that, it pushes it in and rotates it at the same time and it breaks it loose. But we don't need that today. Put this off to the side as well. And the last thing we're going to need is you see there's a little piece right here, there's a little boot. We need to reuse that little boot as well. That's how you get in to adjust your parking shoes in the back. So we need to hold on to this as well. And then we'll just take our rotor off. Okay. Now you see the face right in here? If you take this off and this is all rusted in the back right here, you're going to need to clean all that rust off in the back here so it doesn't interfere with the brake rotor and cause a pulsating feeling. But this is nice and clean, so we're not going to have to worry about that. Now, this is our replacement, and you're going to line it up with these two screws right here. And there's only one way you can go on so you can't make a mistake. The screws have to line up, and then you're perfect. All right, now I am going to clean that off with brake cleaner, just so you know. So that's all set. Let me get some brake cleaner. We're going to clean this up. And uh, you know what? Before we do anything, let's put that piece back in right there. Now, before you put this whole thing back together, you want to put this in first because I've seen them already where you put them in there, like, and I've done it already, where you get in here and you push this in and you push this piece right through and, and it falls inside. So you may have to take the rotor back off. So we're going to do that now. Just push it in a little bit on the corner and it goes right in just like that. All right. Um, let me clean this up and then we're going to go over the bench and what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you. We're going to take these we're going to take these brake pads out just like that. We're going to put them off to the side and we are going to change the hardware kit. This is the hardware kit. You just get underneath here with the screwdriver just like that. We pry it off like this like this and if this is rusted inside here which you can see a, quite a bit of rust on this one you're going to need to clean this up right inside here i'm going to take this off and do it on the wire wheel but if you can't you could take a file such as this you come in here with the file and you clean off the rust on here just like this to clean all that rust off of there because rust is your enemy all right make sure you get that all cleaned up really well and once I get this cleaned up, we'll come back and we'll put those clips back on. And then we're going to lubricate these slide pins here. You know what? Let's do the slide pins right now. Take each one out one at a time. You have a little brake cleaner on a rag. 
clean it off. You need to get this clean. You take a little bit of the uh, synthetic grease or brake grease, whatever you have, lubricate it, and then you put it back in just like this here. Now, you see right on the top that little lip right there? You want to push it so that that rubber boot pops right back up onto that lip, just like that. And now you see, it slides nice and easy. And this one, not so easy. All right, so we're going to pull this out. Now we're going to do the same thing on this one. Some brake cleaner. We're going to clean it all off just like this. We're going to put a little bit of the silicone on here. Not too much, just, a, just enough to make it slide. And then we're going to put it right back into that hole right there that it came out of. Just like that. And you want to make sure, just like we talked about before, you want to make sure that boot pops right back up where it belongs. See how it slides nice and freely now? And the boot pop right back up. See? That's the way it's supposed to be. Alright, so I'm going to take this over, clean this up, and then we'll come right back. Okay. So now that we have everything cleaned up, we're just going to put a very little bit of a bead of silicone on the mounting surface where that bracket is going to connect onto. Just like that. And we're going to take our, our mounting kit or hardware, which is push it on just like that. That's it. Same thing on here. Okay. I'm just going to tap this down to make sure it's in all the way. Okay, so now it's in all the way. I just want to point out one more thing to you as well. These are your old brake pads, of course. These are your new brake pads. Now, brake pads come in two different kinds. They have the outer and they have the inner. Now this one, as you can see, it has that little sensor right on here. See that sensor? That sensor comes in contact with the rotor and it tells you when it needs brakes. So you have to make sure that when you put it back together, you make sure you put the brake pad on that has the sensor in the correct location. Because left side and right side are different. The uh, left side would actually have the sensor up on this location here. So it would be a mirror image of this one. All right, so we know that this is the inner brake pad because that's where the piston was touching. And that's the brake pad right there with the sensor on the bottom. All right, so now we know this is the inner brake pad. Again, every place that the brake pad is going to touch, you put a little bit of silicone. Just like that. This was the inner brake pad. So we take the inner pad, put it into here, like that. And now, it slides nice and freely as it's supposed to. We're going to put our other brake pad in here as well, just like this. And that's it, we're ready to put it back together. All right, so now what we're gonna do is you put, the, put this over the top, just like this. Squeeze the brake pads together. And now we'll grab our screws that we previously took out. We're gonna put a little bit of anti-seize on these because they are a little bit rusted. And then we're gonna screw them both in by hand, loosely, before we do anything else. You'll have to slide your bracket up and down so that you can get your bolt in, and then you'll feel the pop right in. Okay, now we're going to lube this one up as well.
and now that we have both bolts caught, we can, we can screw these down tight. There is torque specs on that. I will look it up and torque these down just so you know. Okay. All right, let me look it up. I'm gonna torque these down and then we'll come right back. Okay. And that is how we tapped it back in. We put the centering bar on here, or a long punch, whatever you have, and tapped it all the way through. And now we'll put that nut back on here and we'll tighten that up. All right, now we gotta screw that nut back on here. Now again, there's torque specs on this too. I'm just gonna air gun this in for now. And then I will look it up and torque that in for, for the proper foot pounds. that bolt in the back so it doesn't rotate. Now we got 17 millimeter. All right. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to reattach our caliper. We'll hang our caliper back on here. We're going to lubricate every place that the brake pad is going to touch the caliper. So uh, we'll continue with that. Okay. Every place that's going to touch the, uh, the brake pad, we're just going to put a little bit of uh, a synthetic brake grease on there. And now we're going to put this over the top like this. And you may have to rotate these slide pins to get back in here the way it's supposed to because the slide pins, they need to fit into that flat area right there. So we're probably going to have to rotate these a little bit, just like that. Push it in. You're going to catch them both by hand before you do anything. And again, remember I said about rotating it? We're going to need to rotate that slide pin like this so that the flat part fits up into this flat part right up in here. Just like that. Okay, and now the flat part is in its spot here and there where it belongs. We're going to tighten it up. That's 14 millimeter, remember? Okay. That's it, let me bring you in there, we'll talk about the backs. Okay, so what we did is we put our new rotor on, we reinstalled our two screws, we put that little cover back in here, that little rubber cover where the brake adjustment is for the parking brake. We reattached our brake caliper mounting bracket with the two bolts, one that was underneath there, and the other one was up on top there. We tightened this up, we torqued it down to proper foot-pounds. We also, Tightened up the top bolt up here, the other bolt on the back of the bracket. We reinstalled the bolts to hold the caliper to the mounting bracket, and we lubricated every place that the brake uh, pad is going to touch, whether it's here, here, or on the piston itself. We installed new hardware, and we lubricated everything that the pad touches. So now if we get in the car, we'll pump this brake pedal up, and the pedal will come right up on top. Okay, so that's it. Backs are all done. If you're staying with me to do the fronts, we're going to continue. If not, all right, as always, thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Unless you're staying with me. Then get a cup of coffee and we're going to continue up front. So come on, let's go.